Hi there, it's Leah here from Lekela Music and today I'm bringing you a piece of music theory that I'm actually really excited to share with you and that's how much of a music theory geek I am. Um, but this is a piece of music theory that's really going to help you. So learning music is all about recognising the patterns and structures um, of the piece um, and using that to, to memorise rather than trying to figure it out note by, by note. So what I'm going to share with you today is a piece, little piece of music theory that you might not have come across before but it's just going to help you start to, to see the structure in the music. Um, so let's get started. So what we're going to be looking at today is uh, what we call the tonic and dominant in, uh, in a key uh, in music and that's going to help us to learn a piece faster. So what we're talking about basically are the degrees of the scale. So in any scale, in any key, the notes have their own positions and we number those positions one to seven. So we're going to look at the key of C. Uh, and we're going to go through each note in the key of C and assign it its, its number and its name because each degree of the scale has a particular name that identifies it. It identifies its position in, in the scale. Okay, so C in the key of C is the home note, it's the tonic. Um, it's the most important note in the scale. And then the super means above, so D is the note above C, so it becomes it's the super tonic. E is the mediant, and I'll show you in a moment why it's called the mediant. F is the subdominant, G is the dominant, A is the submediant, B is the leading note, and then we're back to C, the tonic. So the mediant is midway between the tonic and the dominant, so that's why that's called the mediant. Uh, the submediant is midway between the tonic at the top and the subdominant, sub meaning below, so below the dominant. But the ones we're most important we're looking at today are the most important to us are the tonic and the dominant. And there's a reason for that. So in the key of C, the uh, those the one and five are the tonic and dominant. We use Roman numerals to uh, talk about the chords that are built on those degrees of the scale. So if we're talking about just the degree of the scale, the particular note, then we give it just an ordinary number, one to seven. If we're talking about the chord that's built on that degree of the scale, then we give it a Roman numeral. So if you see the Roman numeral one and the Roman numeral five, we're talking about the, the chords that are built on, on C and G in this case. So the chord of C major has the three notes C, E and G, and G major has G, B and D. And if we look at the notes that are in um, our scale of C, we can see that C, E and G, those three, and then G, B and D, um, that, those two chords cover most of the keys of the notes that are in that key. And if we use uh, a G7, which includes the F, then we have all but one. The only one we don't have is A. And that can be covered by the third most important uh, note in any key, which is the subdominant. Um, so if you ever hear of somebody talking about a three chord song, you know, a lot of folk songs or country music songs are just built on uh, three chords. And they will be those three chords, the tonic, the dominant and the subdominant chords. And the reason is they cover between the three of them, they cover every note in uh, in the key. And so there you can use those chords to to harmonize any note. So why do we need the tonic and dominant? Why do we need to recognize them when we're looking at a piece of classical music or, you know, trying to work out chords in, in a song? So the first reason is that music needs to establish its key at critical points in, in the structure. Um, when we're listening to a piece of music, we can't necessarily identify that it's in the key of C or the key of A or whatever it is. But there, our ear needs a certain uh, consistency. It needs uh, to be able to expect and have its expectations fulfilled in terms of, of what it's going to hear and how the music is going to be structured. So that's completely instinctive. So at the beginning of a piece of music, you're going to hear the tonic chord. So that's the key being established so that, that we know what to expect in the, in the rest of the piece. Within the piece itself, um, particularly in classical music, you'll often start in one key move to another key um, and then maybe another key after that and then the music turns around and starts to gradually come back through a, a, whatever number of key changes it, it's, it's had back to the original key. So we call that modulation. If a piece of music modulates, it usually or frequently at least goes to the dominant key. So if we're in the key of C um, and then uh, we suddenly see an F sharp appear and then the music suddenly seems to be more centered around G rather than C. That music has modulated from the tonic key to the dominant key. 
So that's really useful to recognize in a piece of music that you're playing that a modulation has occurred. Now I'm looking at a different key, so now my tonic has changed and my dominant has changed and I can make more sense of it then. And don't, don't worry, I've got a couple of uh, examples at the end of this video that we'll go through and I'll show you um, what I mean by when we talk about actually using these to, to help us uh, understand music. And then the end of the piece, you know, as I said, we're going to return to the tonic and we're going to, the music usually ends on the tonic and there's often a chord progression um tonic uh, dominant going to tonic um to, to end a piece of music so it's really useful to know what chords to expect there or what what kind of notes to expect one more reason why it's really useful is transposition so if you are learning to play a song or to accompany yourself singing or to accompany somebody else singing um and you have the piece of music in a particular key and that key doesn't suit the singer's voice or your own voice, you might need to transpose it to a different key. In other words, move the whole melody and the chords and everything into a different key. If you know what the tonic and dominant are and understand how that music is structured, it's quite a simple thing to change the key. If you don't understand anything about tonic and dominant and you're you know, trying to figure it out the long way around and it's, it's very painstaking. So the very quick way of doing it is knowing your tonic dominant and usually subdominant as well. Okay, so here's an example. This is the very famous Musette in D from the Anna Magdalena notebook. Um, so the first thing we're going to notice that obviously we're in D, it tells us here, we've got our key signature confirming that. So in the key of D, the tonic is D, that's our home note. And the dominant is going to be a fifth above that, so it's the A. Uh, and look what we have here starting off. We've got our dominant stepping down to tonic. Dominant stepping down to tonic and in the left hand we just have tonic octave so D going to D um, all the way across so that helps you to remember what's going on in the first opening bars uh, of Musette. It's all based around tonic and dominant. In the next two bars we have um, both hands playing the same notes uh, uh, an octave apart but all that's happening is here we're, we're starting this phrase on the median the third degree of the scale stepping up to the dominant stepping all the way back down almost to the tonic but then jumping back to the dominant and then we just have a broken chord uh, the broken tonic chord so a dominant median tonic are the three notes in a, in a basic triad so you're going from um dominant to skipping down to the tonic so this whole section here is it just carves a pathway from the tonic from the dominant back down to the uh, tonic which is often the case um, here's a nice little example as well. This is Allegro by Alexander Reinagel. Um, and look at the left hand. So we're in the key of C, so our tonic is C and our dominant is G. And our left hand is literally going tonic, dominant, tonic, dominant, tonic, subdominant, dominant, tonic. Very easy to remember. Um, if you're trying to, if you just remember it's in the key of C and trying to remember what my left hand does if I'm trying to memorize it. Now I know it's not random notes I'm trying to remember here. It's part of the very basic structure. So in the right hand, we're starting here on the tonic, stepping up. And then here we're going from dominant down to tonic, stepping up again, dominant down to tonic. So that makes that quite easy to understand as well. It stops being a lot of random notes that you have to try and remember. And it becomes a pattern that's, that's quite easy to remember. So easy to remember, actually that you could probably transpose this quite easily, um, even if you're only a beginner, you can transpose this to the key of G. So in the key of G, our tonic is going to be the home note, G itself. Our dominant is going to be a fifth above that, so that's going to be D. So instead of playing C down to G, we're going to be uh, playing G down to D. G, D, G, C would be our subdominant, uh, D back to G. And then our right hand, then we'll just starting on G, stepping up, and then jumping up to D, stepping back down uh, to G. So you can see how, how much sense that makes when you're not no longer talking about individual notes, you're talking about the actual structure, how, how something is actually structured. So these are two quite simple examples um, that you might come across as a beginner. If you're more advanced, if you're, if you're looking at... Um, music by Beethoven or Chopin, you're, you're pretty much going to see the same thing. You know, there might be, there's more notes involved. You might have fuller chords, you might have inverted chords, um, but it's still worth looking out for, for those places where 
um, you know, the chord progressions and where you start, you're starting on dominant, you're definitely going to have, or you're starting on tonic, you're definitely going to have dominant somewhere there in the, in the be beginning as well, because those two things together are going to establish the key. And then from there, you're going to move away, you'll have modulations um, and all kinds of things going on. But it'll be based around that very, very basic structure of tonic and dominant, which is so important because it establishes the key for our ear. Okay, so I, I hope this has been uh, helpful to you. Um, you might want to pull out some music, um, some music books you have and, and see, is this the case? Can you, can you now look at a piece of music, um, memorize it more easily? Can you transpose it to a different key? Can you find the tonic and dominant? Is that making sense to you? Let me know in the comments if you uh, have a piece of music that you're not sure about and I'll, I'll be glad to have a look. Um, and I will be putting together some analyses of, of simple pieces to begin with to help you learn them faster. Um, so they'll be starting to come out on, on Fridays. So I'll be, this is part of the, the music theory that I will be applying to those analyses to help you get through music faster and understand it better. So um, hopefully this will set you up to be able to understand that better. Okay, thank you so much for watching. If you haven't subscribed already, uh, please do so and um, you'll be notified then of new stuff that I uh, bring out to help you in your piano studies. Uh, take care, bye.